Good evening to everybody um, and welcome to Rayside Blowers Quarry. Um, let me start by saying that what we're doing now we're mining limestone, as you all would know. And um, this island is built up of is made up of, of uh, coralline limestone. So we are mining right now limestone for the uses of uh, your building, houses, um, roadworks, projects, also seawall to make a seawall um, reef. This quarry was in existence for over 60 years. It helped build the, the water harbor, it helped build um, sessions of Pelican. It was involved in Sherbin, which is now the Saloid Erskine Sandiford Center. All materials or the groundwork came from here. Most of the major projects uh, over the last let me say the last 60 years, this quarry was involved in, that, in, in those projects. The ABC Highway, we did a part of that work as well. Um, but one, one of the projects I'm, I'm really uh, fond of is the Six Roads, Six Roads to Sirs uh, um, Road. In that nice roundabout at St. Patrick's, yeah, yeah. we do that. To the back of us right here, what we're doing, this is where we crush our stones. Our stone right there. Um, we get the different aggregates, so we do three quarter inch stone or 90 millimeter stone. We do the half inch stone or the 13, well, 30 millimeter or 30.5, depending on uh, how you look at it. Also, uh, 10 millimeter stone, which is the three inch stone. Then we have our fines, which will be the quarter, quarter dust or quarter mix. Stone is quarter stone and dust. Also, we have a material called two dung. Two dung. Two dung. And the two dung, the two dung is put, the two dung is there. You, when you're building roads, the last um, thing you before um, you start to put the asphalt, right? Um, well, you should really put two down, and then you put your, your colas, or what people call tar, and then you put on your, um, your base coat, uh, base course for the, the, the road, and then you put on your finishing uh, uh, course. And of course, um, depending on how it's done, in the last 15 years, or more. It all has to do with the foundation. If the foundation is good, the world is going to stay for a long, long time. Right now, where I am right now, where the guys are money there right now, that is my, that is my, um, that is my level, that is my debt. I am not going to go um, below that um, for two reasons. One, most reason, safety. Right, what we're doing, uh, if you look on this right here, uh, what we're doing, we're, we're doing terraces or what we call terraces or ledges. From there, we're going to step back by another 100 feet or so. And so we're coming down like that. And we're coming back here the same way. And we're going to do this just like that. So we can do, if you can do ledges, because for safety, you don't want a guy to be up there um, mining and that's saying something happened and you're coming down 100 feet. We probably have another, I don't know, depend on, on, on mining another 50 years or so or more. Uh, in this quarry. Limestone can, be, limestone can be a tricky thing, you know. It can be a tricky thing uh, in that you will find that to, to the, um, when, we move, when you remove the, 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 what we call the topsoil, there's always a hard cap with flint. When you break through that cap, um, then the rocks and the stone gets a little softer. Right? And you can find, you can find that alternating, alternating as, you, as you go along. So, one moment you may be on something very, very hard and, and solid, the next minute you might be on. So. Yeah, and then another thing you have to be careful of is um, caves. You don't know until you start to mine. Well, right? you might see a flat face like this, but somewhere in there might be a cave. We are doing our best um, to keep things to keep things as safe as possible. Uh, if you would have noticed um, coming down the, the hill, uh, you would have seen the different signs posted on the side of the, the road coming down. Uh, the speed as well as the deep drop. All that is to alert people that you're going into a danger area. In the blast, we sent out um, letters informing the residents that we're going to be blasting between a particular time. And we're going to be telling whether it's a small blast, a medium blast. Well, we try not to go past medium, but a small blast, a medium blast. And we also tell them the area that we're blasting um, in as well, right? So that um, they'll be alert. And when we are about to blast, uh, I have a, 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 a very huge uh, horn, ear horn, that will go on, the, on one of the high points. 
and just open it up. Okay. So they will know um, that, hey, we said it's going to blast, uh, we're filling next half an hour. The reason why we, we chose the sound quarry and the limestone quarry, so you can see the differences. You will notice the operations at the sound quarry are a bit more sprawling, mm -hmm. but when you look here, it's practically a hole into the ground. Yeah. And that's number one. Number two, as as the guys at the sound quarry mentioned, the, the scarcity of that Commodity. source mm -hmm. compared to this. There are several of these, maybe not as big, but there are several limestone quarries dotted across the island. So when you look at this, the, the scarcity, there's way, way more limestone resource than the sand. Mm -hmm. And another thing too is the depth. With the limestone quarries, we try to Cut ensure that the operator at least reaches a depth where there's at least 30 meters of limestone above, above the, the groundwater. Because yeah. you don't want no pollution or anything in the groundwater. You would notice how we access the quarry where around the, around the circle, around the perimeter. Usually that's the style that limestone operators have adopted mm -hmm. in Barbados, where we have the road along the perimeter going down, so the, the, the road is not too steep, it's easy accessible, and it's also safety. Mm -hmm. So, so when you look here versus the sound quarry, you will see that there, they have, the commodity there is running out. So they have started the commission and to, to implement rehabilitation. But here, as Mr. Bear said, he still has about 40 years left, mm -hmm. but the onus is on the operators that they should still have a decommissioning plan, mm -hmm. a rehabilitation plan and, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in place. In point works. Yeah. Because there's a big hole. Oh, so yeah. you don't want that when they stop operating, you have a big hole. that it would just leave. So I don't know if Mr. Beck yeah. could, could speak briefly on some of the plans. What we normally do is, well, we the another area back. We, we, we will, when we're doing road, uh, road works, we bring in the rough material and we begin to fill up uh, certain certain so areas, pockets. certain pockets. So we try to fill in the, uh, the pockets as, as much as possible. The same, the same material, the same material see, yes. Which is limestone. And that's key because you're looking at drainage, you don't mm -hmm. want to fill it with material that will impede drainage. You don't want no. to use something that's too permeable that will stop water, water penetrating from, yeah. into the limestone. Right. So, so in this case, you would put back something that is similar to what you right, remove. Yeah. So, so the area could return to its, its original mm -hmm. The original form. Most of the island, this gives you kind of a, a cross section of what covers the rest of the island. Mm -hmm. So looking here, you can see that we have we have a 300 feet of limestone cover yeah. across Barbados. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Bear said earlier, there are cases where we encounter caves and voids and stuff in the limestone, and sometimes you don't know you don't until know. you are digging or doing construction activity, and you encounter that. And that is where the geotechnical aspect comes in, where we also provide geotechnical services. Where person, a persons may feel that their property sits above a void, a cave, or something like that. So those caves and voids would be in this limestone material, mm -hmm. all right? And there are three different types of limestone on the island, which is separated mainly by age. Each. We have an upper coral reef right, and the middle coral reef. I think this falls in the, the, the middle, middle coral, coral reef. reef yeah. The upper coral reef is the oldest which would have Harrison's Cave, Welch Mahal, Cole's Cave, and then the lower coral reef, which, which is mostly around the coast, mm -hmm. which is the youngest limestone mm -hmm. on the island. All right, so we are in the middle coral reef terrace. I don't think there are any cave systems, major cave systems. No, no, in the not middle in coral the middle coral reef. reef, no. Most no, are not. in the upper coral reef. Reason being, it is the oldest limestone, mm -hmm. so hence there's a longer period where the caves have time to form. form yeah. All right, there are some caves that have, have that will have spoken to people about in mangroves that fill up. We are not on the Magnitula Harrison Cave, but yet so there are still cave networks in the island. So when you have caves in Barbados, this is the material that the caves are found in the limestone. It is easily broken down by water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you remember we were at Bomaston and I spoke about the rivers. That the rivers, the underground streams are in the limestone. There may be surface evidence to suggest that a cave is below a property where mm -hmm. number one, especially after heavy rains, where you may find soil is being washed away and creating a surface opening. That soil is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, it may be going into a, a cavern below the surface. That's number one. Number two, before uh, invasive um, inspection, the, the integrity of the home, you may be sitting on a cave where the, the integrity of the foundation begins to decay and then you, the foundation begins to, to, to experience differential settlement, 
fractures, cracks, etc. Not that everything you see cracks in the home, there's a cave. Sometimes it's just the preparation, the preparation and the foundation. foundation Sometimes yeah. there's a cave where the person didn't build a house proper on the limestone. Mm. The limestone maybe was too deep and they, they would have maybe just do a marl pad uh, and build the foundation. So then when the foundation begins to settle, settle then there's moves. cracks. So it sounds like those indicate that there's something happening below the surface. But to, to ensure what is happening, there's a there's non-invasive techniques. We have something called a ground penetrating radar system at work where this equipment allows us to, to investigate from the surface to indicate what is happening below. So the ground penetrating radar allows us to identify holes below the ground, even the lithology, what type of lithology is below the surface, etc. So, so that is a non-invasive technique. There's also something called electric resistivity, where you, you put these, these cathodes in the ground, you emit uh, an, an electric current, and then you measure the inverse of that, which is the resistivity of the different rocks. So limestone will have a different value to maybe clear, sand, etc. And usually, with the electrical resistivity, if you see resistivity readings that is either is very hard limestone, meaning it is very resistive, so the current is not traveling through, or is air. So sometimes that could be a cavern or is a very hard, hard limestone. So then that requires you to then do an invasive test to see what's happening. So usually you will do non-invasive first, especially you will see a lot of the large projects, they will do a non-invasive test. And then they will look at that, whether it's GPR or electrical resistivity. And if they see something that requires invasive testing, they will do boreholes or test pits. So that's basically some of the geotechnical processes that you would you would utilize to determine what's happening below the surface. So basically, we show you there are natural resources in Barbados. They are critical because without these limestone quarries, we would practically, and the sandstone quarry, and the shale quarry, which we didn't have a chance to go to, where our rock does a lot of extraction, we would have had to import a lot of these lot resources. Of resources yeah. So therefore, the cost of construction in Barbados, if these weren't available, would have been very high. So, so resources like these are just as important as any, and they are vital to the economy of the country.